All right, decided to start back up here after a nice break, wonderful break. I have a few weeks, work on projects, go float the river. <laughs> Get some sun, you know. Have just a wonderful time off. We rode in the UTVs, did some trails and stuff. Uh, helped some friends with some projects, got to go over and, and eat dinner everywhere. You know, got to catch up, tell some stories. So it was good. Have some fun, stay out too late, you know. <laughs> it was great. So I decided I'm gonna start at Rollins and go south. Just seemed like a good idea. I uh, got some friends, meet up probably in Rollins and start hiking with them if they want me. I'll probably go drive up the trail a little ways and try and uh, reciprocate some trail magic in the form of drinks and fruit and whatever else I can go to the store and get. Um, this would be the end of a a long section for the southbounders. Pay it forwards, you know. It's always good to have those points in the bank. <laughs> and I, uh, I definitely owe some trail magic to some folks, so see who we see. All right, just met a couple folks out here in the beautiful basin here. <laughs> Stopped and got coolers full of uh, uh, fruit and drinks and stuff. And uh, they were happy to have it, which is cool, so yeah, we'll probably hit the trail tomorrow, so we'll uh, see you then. Alright, just picked up my package that got misdelivered however many times. They were real nice about it. It's here in the, safely in the passenger seat, so we're good to go. We got uh, shoes and uh, another hip belt pocket and all kinds of stuff in there, another foam pad because I left my foam pad on the side of the trail on accident uh, somewhere in Montana. <laughs> so, box actually looks pretty good for being uh, handled that many times. I counted before and it was 19 and then I just added up the rest of the cities it went to and it totaled 43 cities over uh, like 12 days or something like that. And it took uh, calling the post office in Idaho, where I had it forwarded to, uh, and she put in an inquiry to like three different distribution centers for somebody to grab this package. And um, so, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it was kind of funny, but here it is. So we're good. All right, a couple of gear changes here. Now that we are heading in a new direction yet again, I know, very sporadic, and who is this guy and why can't he make up his mind? I get it, but uh, just wanted to go and hike with some some friends that I met. You know, everyone kind of uh, split up and dispersed uh, in Colorado um, that I was hiking with, and people went home, people went to the basin, uh, people went to Montana, they're just all over. Since I have the opportunity, um, yeah, I'm just going to go meet up with some different people and and this hike is definitely going to be unique to me and I wouldn't have it any other way really. So on the left over here we'll start. Um, this stuff minus my tent and my trekking poles there on the right is stuff that I will no longer be carrying. The sandals are probably the thing that I'm the most unsure about not carrying and they very well might end up back in my pack before this is all said and done but um this is an extra pillowcase don't need it because i usually wear my beanie at night so my stinky head is covered by my beanie and i may ditch my other pillowcase altogether i'm not sure yet um these are the straps and the stays for my hammock slash poncho you know i've just found that I haven't really used my hammock much. You just get more into the game of walking rather than lounging about. Uh, this is the the controller cord 
for the heated element in my sleeping bag. While I was very grateful to have it in early or in spring in Colorado, I think now, I mean, I can barely sleep with my sleeping bag on. It's almost to the point where I really need to get a sleeping bag that's a less of a rating and lighter. The bear spray, I felt okay and comfortable not carrying that on the lower portion of the CDT. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave that. My mittens here were amazing. Again, when it was freezing cold, they were awesome to have, but I it went the last month without touching them. Uh, my mosquito net, in theory, is probably a great thing to have. Um, I just found that I just put on DEET and you just keep moving. Yeah, they suck. They get in your face sometimes, but overall, trying to breathe with that thing on, like breathe hard, it makes me woozy almost. And probably one of the uh, big, biggest, maybe, nah, maybe not, I don't know. Changes I'm gonna make is my stove and my fuel. Um, and I'm just going to bring a little um, plastic container and do the cold soap thing. Rest of the gear, you know, pretty much stayed the same, more or less. Got the oh, four days worth of food there. Uh, still have my bottles that I started with. We'll see how long those last. They've got dents and scrapes and crinkles and all kinds of stuff in them, but I wash them out and I don't let them get too funky. Um, those sport caps, I've probably gone through three of those as of right now. I took out my pack liner and I, this is the inflation sack for my uh, sleeping pad and I ended up using the sack as my pack liner and if I have to replace it it's really easy to take that tape off and and put the little inflation nipple on a new bag. The belt next to it there has been really nice to have so I'm going to continue on with that. But, uh, the other, I guess the other thing I replaced is some of the clothing that I'll be wearing but uh, You'll have to see that in the future. It'll be a, it'll be a big reveal, you know, nice surprise of fashion runway, you know, and everything. Maybe in the woods. Oh yeah, before I forget, I did, uh, I did get a new pocket here. It's just a, a black one. I thought I ordered the same one, but I'm not really picky. It'll do. I've just gotta change out the um, zipper handle things there. Those things clink like. And I don't like them, so I like to put the uh, the 550 cord ones on. Ended up getting new pull tips. So what I ended up doing was actually taking the aluminum poles that I had and uh, using the aluminum portion in the carbon or in the rest of the carbon body. And for no other reason than when I tried to replace these pull tips on the carbon ones, I broke them, every single one of them right here, just snapped it end right off trying to get these tips off. Little pro tip, these are glued on on the Cascade Mountain ones, and so just hammering on this to get it off, uh, it doesn't work, at least not for me. My dad had the great idea of grinding this down, and he was able to get it off, but I had pretty much broken all of them at that point. We're using the aluminum ones and that'll work just fine. Morning, morning. Back at it this morning. After a nice, uh, nice break. We're out of Rollins here. We, uh, we got a new get up a little bit. We got some new stuff. Um, new shirt. Fancy new gloves. <laughs> they were super loud, so I had to have them. Uh, yeah, as you can tell, I'm not in the forest right now, I'm in the basin. So I'm starting south from Rollins with some uh, some friends. We'll head down through Colorado, see some beautiful stuff, I'm sure. Can't thank friends enough for giving us a nice shuttle uh, service to places we needed to go and family for helping out there. And couldn't have been possible without them, so uh, many thanks for that. We're gonna do the uh, the official route here on the 
dirt roads, and probably mostly dirt roads. We're gonna pass by some lakes here south of town, and, and we'll drop back down probably in about 20 miles and hit the, uh, the Sage Creek Road where it's paved, and probably do the Sage Creek Road all the way until where it turns off to go on the CDT that's on the east side of Sage Creek uh, in the campground there. So here we go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for August, a decent bit of water out here. <laughs> that's where we're headed, we're headed in between these two hills here, just right up in there. Follow that valley up and eventually cross over this hill that's on the left. So I'm also interested to see how the legs are going to feel after uh, a few weeks off from the trail. I did get new shoes. I pushed my last shoes to 760 miles. They were, uh, they were done and you know, I could kind of see that they were getting a little wonky on the bottom, but I'll tell you what, they held up great. I did get some arch support insoles and put them in figured why not see how those work see if they're uh if they help or if it'll do anything i do have the ultra ones in my pack in case they give me fits i can just change them out i don't know if you can see the tractor back there but yeah we got some real nice graded roads here to walk on this morning too and they are super flat no rocks <laughs> nice and cushy about the best you could ask for really now we made it over the ridge here to our great lakes <laughs> yeah we'll head down this nice uh i think this road is a little steep okay i took the insoles out and put the factory ones back in and threw the other ones away back there <laughs> those aren't going to work it's amazing how much different type of stress that looks on your foot. And as you can probably hear, it's very windy. Alright, little Sage Creek. Turns out pretty good. We'll take it. Very windy. Morning. <laughs> day, day two. Started day two out of town. I don't know if you'll be able to hear me. It's uh, it's a little windy as the as the Wyoming does, right? But uh, yeah, yesterday was whew, it was a butt kicker for sure. My feet definitely let me know that I took some time off. It sure makes you uh, appreciate the levels that you build up to being able to walk. I mean, we did like twenty seven miles so pretty good but i took some ibuprofen last night i don't really take very much but when you need it you need it i think yesterday was we calculated it was like 14 miles of asphalt like straight up nothing else no dirt no two track just asphalt so that would have been the longest asphalt stretch that i've walked on trail so far uh, today will be 12 miles, so it will be a close second there. Oh, took a tumble there. <laughs> Usually pretty graceful. <laughs> it's August 12th, and we still have snowpack <laughs> in the very bottom of the basin here beautiful walking weather on a uh, asphalt road i'll tell you that well we left the uh highway as you can see had a very nice visit from uh the hoffmans which was fantastic got some tacos and some drinks and and some shade so that was wonderful thank you for all that well, a little update on the feet. So after two, two and a half weeks off, I got back on the trail yesterday and I feel like the pain we did, so we did 27 miles and half were two track 
and half were asphalt. And I feel like the pain gradually increased until about mile 22. And from there, I feel like it was just the same. Uh, I crashed hard last night. I slept really good. But of course the watch said I slept like crap, but I really slept good. <laughs> and, uh, and I crashed and it was super windy in the tent. It was flapping around and stuff. And, and I took 400 milligrams of ibuprofen. I don't take it very much. It's only when I feel like it will make a huge difference. So today I've gotten the pain on the top of my foot. And now I am to that familiar pain point where I just feel like they just hurt the same as they always did. Uh, that's how it's been. And it's very interesting to see that. Well, that would be Divide Peak. We got a beautiful view here out across. <laughs> More snow. Well, had a very gracious offer from a wonderful friend to uh, bring us resupplies here right off the road. It's very helpful. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. It's been a good last section. We, uh, we hiked. There, I'll show you. So I hiked this uh, ridge line all the way over, passed down into there. And... Uh, it was fun, it's pretty, pretty good, nice little downhill walk there, as you can see, so that was great. Still in the Sierra Madres here, just walking through these awesome meadows, and they've been wonderful. Separated by a little bit of trees, but lots of water in here. Um, I just stopped at Mr. Waite's cabin, and uh, he gave us Dr. Pepper, uh, cheese crackers, some wonderful chairs to sit in, a coat, because believe it or not, it got a little chilly there. It's crazy how you stop walking and you just kind of get a little cold, <laughs> especially when the sun goes away. I always tell people I have no in-between at the moment. It's either I'm hot, burning crazy amounts of calories, or if we stop moving, you just freeze immediately almost, unless the sun's out. I don't know how burning calories equates to body heat but if it is anything like a one-to-one -one ratio i would say we maybe three times the average person's body heat throughout the day but again i have no idea if that's true or not mr cook brought us some resupply packages which was awesome so nice and full on food now all the way down to steamboat I think they were saying it's a little cooler up here than normal this time of year. Like the mushrooms haven't come out and stuff like that. And they like to go pick those and, you know, I don't know, put them on their pizza or eat them and see flying jelly monsters. I don't know what they do. <laughs> no, probably not. They probably just the nice, uh, delicious, edible kind is all. stump of a tree until it started moving. Wondering if this tree got lightning because there is pieces of it everywhere. Yeah, it's... Where is it? It's all over the place. A cool little place. <laughs> And I think I'll stop and get some water so we can camp tonight. 
Oh, a little waterfall. Okay. <laughs> That'll make filling it easy. Now, I would call that an ideal blowdown. <laughs> ah, so nice. Well, I've been skirting around this lake for a little while, and it's just the most gorgeous blue of water. <laughs> Yeah, it's a hog park reservoir. Would be nice to take a dip, but uh, I'm not gonna lie, it's just a little bit chilly today. It's not been the heat that I've been used to, which I'm not complaining about. It's actually been very nice. But yeah, we just got here to the road crossing. I think we might just take the road over to the other, the other part of the trail and find a place to camp in between. It's already 7.30. Sun so will be going down here pretty quick. It's always nice to kind of find your spots before you lose all the light and have your dinner. So find a spot to camp. Well, I've seen a few of these now. So we must be close to mile 1500, although I don't know if they mean northbound or southbound. Although if the trail is, what do they say, 30, 3,100 miles and 1500 is real close to the middle, so maybe it doesn't matter. But yeah, I mean, obviously I'm flip flopping around, so <laughs> that uh, I think I'm on like miles 1700, 1800 right now. So that doesn't that doesn't necessarily apply to me, but it's still cool to see all of them. Yeah, this must mean we're. We're here, <laughs> Stone Gate. Cool. Back into Colorado, all right. Uh, Wyoming, Colorado. Okay, it took me a sec to see what that was. Sweet. There we go. Onwards, onwards. I guess it's time to change the maps. Stop to plug the headphones in to get a little charge. Um, just give an update on these, I guess. So every single one of these bags that I've had, this is what happens to them. The, uh, the seal peels off first that you pull on. Pull them apart and it just breaks off. And you can use it. I'll usually stop it and rip it like this. And uh, you can use it for a while, but eventually it breaks like down here below where the seal is at. And that is why I carry a spare in here <laughs> at all times. Uh, I just think it's a good idea for food, but yeah. Something, not not a huge thing, just uh, one of these things with these opsacks I've noticed. They work pretty good. Uh, definitely keep the odor in and you don't have to deal with any critters or rodents or uh, or otherwise. That's why we're on the subject. One other thing I do with uh, bags that I really don't want to come open uh, in my food bag because it would be just horrible to clean out is uh, you you roll the seal side down over and over and over and then put rubber bands on it. And uh, that pretty much will not leak unless you pop a hole in this or something. That seems to work really good. I've had a problem with a few of these Ziploc seals coming open. Um, and if this spills in there, it just becomes a giant nightmare to clean up. So, yeah, yeah, just a little tip, a little, you know, tricks of the trade you learn over here. Alrighty, well, I don't know if you can see the bridge, but it's out. So, uh, yeah, just crossed here, and luckily I uh, chose to keep my sandals in there, so I get to keep my dry-ish feet, which is uh, pretty nice. Wasn't too bad, maybe knee-deep. They're always kind of fun to cross, I think. I mean, I don't know. It's just a different challenge throughout the day, you know? I don't know if you'll be able to hear him, but there was just a guy on a motorcycle that came down right as I walked across the water. He's like, you think I can get my bike across there? And I was like, 
Yeah, right, dude. <laughs> it's a little much to just gung-ho the bike through there. I think there's a bridge to the south, but this is pretty much the trail. It's, uh, it's completely overgrown. I guess everyone's probably turning back. I don't think it's too long. Maybe I shouldn't say that, but yeah. I'm just gonna keep on going and uh, I'll find it out there eventually. <laughs> he said he saw some of the folks I was hiking with about a half an hour back. And I was like, well, cool. If you uh, run into them again, tell them about the bridge. Maybe they'll be smarter than me and take a road around this place or something. <laughs> Keeps the adventure going here. This is kind of stuff that I thrive on. So it's, uh, it's actually pretty fun to me. Even though you, uh, it's a trail, but you can't really see exactly where it's going, to tell you the truth. It's pretty overgrown. You can kind of get a hint because there'll be lots of cut logs you'll be hiking next to. Some of it's beat in here, you can tell, but some of it is a little questionable. You just get in the middle of this dense stuff and you're like, okay, now what? <laughs> <laughs> All in fun. It's more jungle, Jim. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. There we go. Cool. Just glad I have safety glasses on, honestly. <laughs> Ooh. might be going out by the river if this gets any thicker <sighs> all right I gave up came out here to the edge because <laughs> wow that was nasty in there this is uh, much more manageable I don't think we have to go very far it's probably just over to this uh, campground or whatever here, but it's enough to make an impression. It was only about 10 or 15 minutes of that, so that's just fine. <laughs> that was actually kind of fun. It was uh, interesting to make my way through that for sure, but yeah, we'll keep on going down. This, uh, this looks quite a bit better just at first glance here. So we'll see what we see. Well, this is kind of a first. Said they were gonna add pesticides to the stream to get rid of non-native fish. August 15th through the 18th. It is currently the 14th. It's too bad, cause this, uh, well, I, I mean, it's fine. It should be fine. It's hard, uh, I don't like cutting it that close, but this stream uh, feeds into the water sources all the way down this canyon that we follow for a little while, so I guess, uh, I don't know, I guess we'll see what we do for water. up to 11,900 feet here and I was like well, back in Colorado again <laughs> right up to 12,000 almost uh, right up right across the, uh, the border there the day after right but uh, yeah Just oh having a hydro yard sale here as well got all my you know all my stuff laid out there was actually frost on the uh, tent last night it got, it got a little chilly I woke up halfway and I was warm but I was like I should put my uh, filter in my sleeping bag because I forgot 
And when I woke up again, I was like, wow, I'm glad I did that. Because that thing would have froze for sure. I slept really nice, which was great. I'll just keep on hiking here. Um, show you the view real fast. Pretty nice. Great place to have lunch. Well, we've done uh, 23 miles today. So far, it's about five o'clock. So, feet are feeling pretty good, actually. What I've noticed is uh, my muscles are like big time out of shape. Uh, I get winded. Of course, that might be because I know everyone always blames the elevation, but uh, it, you know, 12,000 feet, it, it happens pretty pretty easily. You seem to get winded until you get really used to that. But yeah, we've hovered between uh, 10 and a half and 12,000 all day today, pretty much since I had climbed out of camp, um, which was like 10 o'clock, I think. And from there, we haven't dropped off this, uh, this series of ridge lines here. And I don't think we will until we uh, try and hitchhike into Steamboat. But yeah, it's dead calm. Super nice. Thought I'd take a break. Uh, there's a lake over here. So I've just been enjoying that. And, uh, and eating. I'm proud to say that I think I have the appropriate amount of food this time. This is just about all that I have left. So a couple of ramens, uh, some banana chips and some nuts. I have two two bars and a breakfast in there. Uh, ramens will be tonight, breakfast tomorrow morning, and bars and nuts and banana chips are just snacks. So I am uh, I'm doing better on that. Well, the hike today has not been like this for long, but for the last few miles, I mean, it's just been the most meandering, awesome trail at 11,000 feet. <laughs> Right on this, uh, I guess this is a ridge line. Yeah, um, it's been wonderful. It's been nice. It did a little bit of, a little bit of cloud cover, you know, hiding the sun here and there. But it's not too hot. It's perfect temperature. It's just, it's pretty beautiful out right now. Ooh. One guy was just walking across the trail. Yeah, I'll let you go. <laughs> He's like, I'm out. You ain't got any buddies hiding in the weeds here, do ya? <laughs> Hope not. See you later, Spikey.